Honorable Philip J. Pierre's Labour Party administration is confronted with a convergence of socio-economic challenges due to the pandemic and more recently, record high inflation rates and instability on the global oil market linked to the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict. St. Lucians, like the rest of the world, are negotiating the sharp increases in the cost of goods and services associated with these external shocks. Led by Honorable Pierre, the technocrats in the finance and economic development ministries have devised policies designed to shield consumers from escalating market prices. Gemma Laffey is the Director of Research and Policy in the Ministry of Economic Development. During a June 30th news conference, Laffey explained government continues to forego tax revenue on retail petroleum products to subdue sharper price increases at the pumps. The price that we see at the, at the pump, um, although very, very high by historical levels, um, is significant, is really reflecting the external um, vagaries in the international market that we have no control over. We simply price takers in the world market and um, we're oil, oil consuming public um, uh, country. So um, the government has tried to provide relief for years, for since, from since June 2021, last year, um, till about March of 2021 of this year, the government kept the prices stable to basically um, to shield consumers from the rising prices that actually started back then. But when the war broke out in, U in Ukraine, um, the government was unable to continue to basically provide to cover um, that sort of shield to that extent, and there were incremental increases. But yet still, despite these increases in the retail prices, the government's ta tax stake has gone down significantly to negligible amounts, and in some cases to negative revenue. The Prime Minister says the government is in constant pursuit of potential solutions to strengthen consumer protection to ensure St. Lucian households and businesses stay afloat during this financial crunch currently affecting the global economy. Government had not intervened in the in the in the um, in the fuel prices. Um, St. Lucia, as of now, would have been facing much higher prices, as we see in St. Kitts, in Barbados, and even in Anguilla, um, which the retail price of gasoline, for instance, hovers around eight between eighteen to twenty dollars a, a, a gallon, and yet, uh, but we're still at seventy ninety five. Um, so, again, the consumer would have faced a lot higher prices had the government not decided to basically reduce the excise tax take and basically go into negative territory to subsidize, um, to some extent, some of the products. Also, our VAT rates, mm -hmm. something, something that we have we, we seem to have forgotten, our VAT rate is the lowest in the entire region, right? Yes. It's the lowest. Some countries pay 17.5% VAT. Some, I think some can pay 21% VAT. I'm not sure about that. But we pay 12.5%. So it's a double whammy. So we're losing revenue on, from, from, it, from, from our excise tax, and our VAT rate is lower than anywhere else in, in, in the region. And further, we have the most exempt, exempt goods, again, as far as VAT is concerned. The cost of oil is directly linked to the cost of consumer goods and some services, according to financial experts. St. Lucia has zero influence on the global oil market and can only use targeted tax policies to manage the impact of volatile price changes on the local economy. From the office of the Prime Minister, Rihanna Isidore.